Here we go. Great. Hello, everyone, and Professor Buckman. My name is Claude Kirshner, and we're talking about change methods today. And I chose the human systems dynamics, which is an adaptable method. And the adaptable method is a great category that I believe needs to be taken into consideration when we're talking about humans. And the human system dynamics um, is going to be a great one to discuss. So there may be some interruptions. I'm still in my office. It's four o'clock on Monday. And I actually have my daughter here as well. So please excuse any interruptions as they come about. So let's get started. So what is the adaptable method? Uh, this particular approach, the human systems dynamic approach is a complex, is a part of a complex adaptable system. And when we're talking about systems and organizations, uh, we're talking about complexity because we're dealing with people. So we always have to keep that in the back of our mind. Uh, adaptable method, it kind of speaks for itself. It's used for a variety of purposes in organizations or communities, including planning, structuring, and improving. There's really not one particular way of doing things. It has a lot to do with the assessment. Uh, this group uses principles and practices that adapt to varying communities and organizational needs. So there's not one specific type of company or one specific aspect of business that this method could help. So the human systems dynamics, the HSD approach, uh, it actually has this approach, this um, theory has uh, been around since about uh, 1986. And I'll tell you a little bit about the lady who created it. But this Human Systems Dynamics Institute, I wanted to show you this website. It's actually an entire institute that has to do with this HSD approach. And they have resources. Uh, it's a, a community of scholars and um, consultants and practitioners and people that are just interested in the subject matter. And I, I used a lot of the, the things from this presentation. Uh, I used this as a resource for the presentation as well. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. This HSD offers powerful theory and practice to transform intractable problems into patterns of possibility. And that's a quote from the HSD Institute website. Human Systems Dynamic, HSD is an inquiry-based problem-solving process, the paradigm for an emerging future, its complexity science made useful, models of methods for complex change and path to personal transformation. And we'll talk a little bit more about it. So who invented it? It's a lady named Glenda um, Oyang. I'm assuming that her last name is, um, the E is silent. She realized in her own company in 1986 that she was running into these patterns of difficulty and she was just kind of getting to a standstill. Uh, it had a lot to do with human beings and the systems that they've created. And uh, so she established a theory and practice based on complexity theory. In 2003, she founded the Human Systems Dynamics Institute that we just talked about to build a foundation for continuing inquiry and practice. Uh, since then, the Human Systems Dynamics field, the Institute, and the network of HSD associates have emerged as powerful forces for change. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. This is her TED Talk. So HSD perspectives, these are uh, two quotes from Glenda that I pulled from both the website and one of her journal articles. It says, the emerging field of human systems dynamics integrates perspectives of complex adaptive systems, CAS, we talked about that, and other nonlinear sciences, meaning A plus B plus C. It doesn't just move in a progress. It's complex. It's diverse. It's not, um, it's not trackable in a, in a linear fashion. With traditional social sciences to articulate the complex dynamics that shape self-organizing patterns. We'll talk more about self-organizing in social systems at all levels, intrapersonal, interpersonal, within small groups, organizations, and communities. HSD methods include network, eco ecological, and genome, genomic models in which system, systemic and functional system features like patterns emerge and are subject to, to fundamental changes in identity over time. It's an open systems approach. So why use it? The, the change aspects of organizations when it involves people is not always uh, simple. Sometimes it's complex as we discussed. So we want to use a systems-based approach to investigate behavior in a complex system. Organizations and communities around the world, um, they can't just change with one existing service or one existing consultant. It, it, it's a little bit more detailed than that. Human systems are unpredictable and complex. We all know that. Complex environments create sticky problems. Change makes yesterday's answers irrelevant today. So things are always changing. And this HSD approach incorporates those changes. 
So here is from the HSD Institute website about who um, can benefit from the, this particular change method approach. Uh, private industry, government, nonprofits, and communities, a lot of different uh, organizations can benefit from this particular approach. Uh, teaching and learning, business and industry, healthcare, government, philanthropy organizations, all can benefit. Uh, when is it best to use this? It's, it's, there's a plethora of different dynamics within business, uh, aspects of business that you can use this approach with. Leadership, team building, large group decision making, human resource management, marketing and communications, training, strategic planning, and facilitation. So from the HSD Institute website, I garnered out some other aspects of use for this particular uh, change method. Uh, when people are leading in complexity, which is hopefully all leaders in some way or another, uh, manage strategic change, uh, building adaptive capacity and collaborate to create community, uh, plan in uncertainty. So there's a lot of issues that you could uh, use this change method approach for. So this is a little bit uh, new to me, this particular model, but Glenda was the one who created this model. It's also known as the CDE model. And there's three aspects to it. And it has a lot to do with the assessment aspect of this particular change method approach. So the premise of it is that when you put people together in groups, that they have these self-organizing patterns. And sometimes those self-organizing patterns can be unhealthy. They, can, they won't be mission focused. They will create some toxicity within the business environment. And that's where this complexity comes into play. And that's what this model does is it kind of deduces out or, or or, uh, strains out some of that complexity once going through this model. Uh, containers, differences in exchange, we'll talk about each one of them. Containers define the self that is, the that is to organize. We ask, what is the emergent pattern that needs to be reshaped? The container bounds the system and determines what is in or out of the emerging pattern. Bounding the system isn't good. So the more containers, not so good. Difference aspect, the difference provides the motivation for change. Why do we want to change these containers? We ask, what are the differences that make a difference? When everyone is the same, then nothing new is going to be created. Differences also establish the form of the patterns as they emerge. So we're asking lots of questions. It's a very dynamic question asking needs assessment approach. Exchange. Exchange connects individuals or groups to each other across their differences. We ask, what are the connections that need to inform the new patterns? So this is the last circle of what, remember, we're talking about these self-organizing patterns. So there's two different examples here. If you have a large container, which means a lot of, a lot of things are being bound, the bounded, the organization, it's not good. Significant differences, uh, lots of motivations to change the containers, and loose exchanges. This, what, this is what gonna set conditions for slow self-organizing processes with rich but fuzzy results. Another example would be a smaller container, few high priority differences, tight exchanges. This moves a group more quickly towards well-defined but perhaps too narrow patterns. So these are three conditions for the CDE that influence how quickly patterns emerge and how distinct the emergent patterns are. Remember, we're looking for these patterns of these self-organizing tendencies so that we can call them out, we can see them, and we could either encourage them or we could uh, discourage them depending on what the mission of this uh, assessment or this uh, consultation is, this change change is. Summary of the CDE model. The CDE model helps us understand and influence patterns as they emerge, like I just said, in teams, organizations, and communities. We're identifying patterns, but they do not let us predict or control change, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to change things. So this is really just a model to really do an assessment. The natural self-organizing processes of human systems ensure that they will always be surprising, which is true. In each situation, we explore opportunities to shift the underlying conditions to encourage new and more productive patterns across the system as a whole. So how are organizations using HSD? There's a lot of organizations out there doing it. If you look at this institute, you'll see uh, organizations that are, are people bound or are um, complex in nature with a lot of organizational behavior dynamics, with a lot of interpersonal dynamics. An HSD assessment tracks changes at individual group, departmental and organizational levels of scale, of scale simultaneously and considers how each of these levels influences one another. So it looks at everything. Uh, build success for yourself and others. 
develop people and processes that improve outcomes, stay connected, learn your way into a shared future. These are many reasons why and how organizations are using this HSD. This is an example. It is a case that I was able to find on Google Scholar. Uh, Cope County is an alias name, but it's a, a large county governmental institution and had a lot of employees. And in 2004, they were going through a transformation of integrating human services. So this is a human county public institution um, serving other humans. So as you can see, there's lots of complexity that can go along with that. Six departments merged into one, six departments merged into one, creating a 3000 employee department, taking on these human service functions, including children, adult and family services, community health services, economic assistance, training and employment assistance, and veteran services. Lots of services, lots of people. So senior managers wanted to assess the change. Is this change, this consolidation of departments, is it working? Um, what are our goals here? Assessment was about behavior and performance. How can we assure that this change is meeting the needs of the client, the needs of the organization? Integration of services for customer support was the goal. First, you want to integrate the services. Then you want to make sure the customers get in the support that they need. They use the CDE model. Remember the CDE model we talked about um, and also the four conditions of self-organization. So here's what happened, the intervention, and a lot happened. This was, uh, it seemed like it was a team of at least 10 OD consultants that came in and did this. And the assessment of five primary containers, remember those containers we talked about, uh, management level containers, individual employees, service delivery processes, change initiatives, and departments as a whole. The data collection was based on multiple activities. This is the core concept of this HSD model. They do activities to draw out, uh, they ask questions questions, information from staff members, from people to understand the dynamics of their um, complex work environments. So the practitioners asked lots of questions and recorded their answers um, about the integration of the departments. They requested, this was pretty cool, they requested essays from each team member, from a lot of team members, not all team members, and they analyzed the essays. They, they used a software for coding and, and to understand um, what they were talking about and, and they used that for decisions. They ran about 10 focus groups with a lot of people and they of course asked about change. This is a, a great one. They asked in the organization, they surveyed who were the change agents here in this organization and they nominated essentially a hundred people that they would consider change agents and they brought them to an event uh, where they celebrated them, they talked about change, why it's important and they kind of uh, further enforced this um, intervention that they were working on with HSD. Some of the results that they achieved with this, they, the consultants came up with detailed change reports and summary reports produced after each activity. They ran maybe eight or nine different activities and immediately they had reports and analysis for implementation. Uh, data summaries for redesigned teams for best integration. Remember this integration happened over time and they would, they would understand which way we're going with this integration of the different departments into one. And um, they would redesign it based on some of these summary reports. Immediate implementation of recommendations after the activity. They, as soon as they saw something that they didn't like, remember the, the human systems dynamics is about the CDE model and it's about the, um, what happens is when people get together that self-organizing concept and when they would notice these unhealthy patterns, they would immediately address them. So they had summary reports, assessed the conditions for successful change, shifted self-organizing patterns, which I just talked about in the organization for change, clarity for skills in the new organization. This is big. What is it that it's going to take for me to be successful with this integration? Uh, made the emergent patterns known. Patterns were captured at all levels. Helped the individuals be conscious of their own behavior. Here are some of the references I used. I was able to use what Professor Buckman sent, this um, change handbook, which was great. It had a little uh, human systems dynamic, little introduction with Glenda and uh, some of the things that she did and is doing. I actually emailed Glenda, by the way, and I also have a uh, call set up for Thursday for somebody from the HSD Institute to come and speak to me about some of the things I'm, I'm currently experiencing in my own organization and just to further my knowledge of this particular uh, change methodology. So I use that resource and then um, there was a, a great one too, this uh, human systems dynamics complexity based approach to a complex evaluation systems concepts and evaluations. This was um, just, this is where I got the Cope County case study 
And uh, that was a, a great read as well. So uh, in summary, uh, this particular, let me see if I can show my face here. Hi, <laughs> this particular uh, change method, adaptable method is a, is a great one. I, I garnered a lot of wisdom from it. I'm going to apply some of it here in my own organization. And it really um, helps me feel at peace knowing that the human behaviors within organizations, within departments um, can be very complex, but there is an answer to it uh, to at least try to understand it. It's very difficult to, to change it, but the reality is there are interventions that you can do to progressively make some of these changes because these self-organizing tendencies are going to happen. And when they happen, we have to see them, we have to see the patterns, and we have to try our best to control the dynamics of that self-organizing. So thank you so much for listening to this presentation. Hopefully it was enlightening, and I look forward to maybe answering any questions. Peace and love. God bless. Talk to you soon. And.